Some like it hot, but we like it raw. Get ready for Raw Nirvana. We have a special treat for you. Special guest Scott McMahon of Cosmic Cacao here in Sedona. I'm going to turn it over to him and he's going to introduce some of his lovely and delicious chocolates. Okay, well, thank you. I started making this chocolate about, well I moved into my kitchen about six months ago and so this has been a very rapid evolution. And I have actually my first product that I, that I first created that kind of launched the whole thing. That was back in October, so it was about eight months ago when I first created that. And there's been a, it's, it's come a long way in a very short amount of time. And then what I've done, I, I, I did not choose chocolate, although I, I've always loved chocolate. It really chose me. And I, I set out to really just with an open heart to create whatever, whatever came to me. And this is, this is how it's evolved so far. And what I do, I've, I've completely fallen in love with the cacao plant. It's, I think it's, I, I call my, cos, my business Cosmic Cacao because I really do believe that cacao is, is straight from the gods, it's otherworldly. Uh, it's a very medicinal food and it's a very healing food. It's full, it's the highest food source on the planet of magnesium. 90% 90, 90 of us are deficient in magnesium. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it's loaded with theobromine, anandamide, um, PEAs, which are, those are all a kind of a cocktail of chemicals that our brain produces when we're experiencing bliss. And with, you know, we all know that chocolate is good for us. It's just that we've been told that it's not. And so we're... They lie. And, and, and it's because it feels good. It feels great. And, and so, you know, I'm just trying to serve that as highly as possible. And, I, and all of my chocolate, it's never roasted. It's heirloom cacao. Uh, it's never heated. I never heat it above 102 degrees. Uh, before it gets to me, I know that it's never heated above 118, and it's probably kept much lower than that. I use agave nectar and fruits and yacon syrup and dates as my sweeteners. And I just, I have a lot of fun with it. Every week we come up with new flavors and we just play as much as we possibly can. And so that's what we'll do today. Um, we have some great, great recipes, things that, that I make for my family, and so, I, I think that it might be a fun way to just kind of expand our family and, and make that together. Today. Yay. I've been looking forward to this all week. So we have we have four flavors here. We have the Cosmic Swirls. It has a cayenne milk, kind of milky chocolate uh, center. And then the dough is a sesame mesquite dough. And the truffles here are the black and white truffles. And that has a pecan milk chocolate ganache chocolate uh, or pecan milk is the milk. And then the froggies, my daughter Naira designed these here with us. And uh, it was her design from the, from the beginning. She chose the mold, she chose the shape. She said how she wanted it to be designed on the back. The first flavor was peppermint, so they had to do peppermint. Uh, she tasted it, she said she wanted it sweeter and more peppermint. So uh, it, this has been totally Naira's creation. And those are the peppermint frogs are with the white with the white tops and with the uh, reddish backs from cinnamon frogs, and those are a brand mm. new flavor. Yummy. Now when I was at your place the other day, when I was going home, you sent me with one of these cosmic, cosmic rolls, Yeah. and I was going to try to save it when I got home, but I, it didn't last. I had like one <laughs> little piece when I got back, and I was smiling like the whole way home. So you had like 12 so, slices on your yeah, way Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and I was, I was zooming, like I was going crazy, I mean I loved it. And, uh, <laughs> So I'm really excited for those today. <laughs> snack delicious. Mm -hmm, they are indeed. <laughs> if, I had, if I took a brown lunch still mm -hmm. to school or work, those would definitely be in oh, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And my mom would be okay with it because it's <laughs> all good. So let's get started. Okay, so we're gonna make. We're gonna start by making sesame milk, which is incredibly simple. I think it's something that every person who eats raw foods or is interested in improving their diet. I, I personally, in my own experience, do not find soy helpful. I just, it doesn't feel good to me to consume it. Um, and so this was just kind of born out of that. I was wondering, well, how is soy milk made? How are nut seed milks made? And it, was, it couldn't be simpler as you're about to see. So we're gonna make a very basic sesame milk and it's not, we're not gonna sweeten it. We're going to sweeten it later with the bananas and some agave nectar and some cacao powder and make a kind of a chocolate banana shake. 
and so we'll have and we'll make plenty for everybody to to experience that. So I do this first. Yeah. So the first thing we do is uh, I believe this is three quarters of a cup of sesame seeds. Sweet. And uh, and then a good pinch of salt. And I I usually use Himalayan crystal salt when I'm in the kitchen every morning. The first thing I do is put some salt, whole salt crystals in my um, in my spice grinder and grind it up, and it gets really soft, almost like powdered sugar. So it dissolves really easy. And then we just add and then just water. This whole thing? Uh, yeah, use about a third of it to begin with. No worries. And then what we do, this is a very noisy blender, so uh, what we do is we, the reason why we put a third of it first is so that it really mixes up all of the sesame seeds that are in there. And then we're gonna, we're gonna keep it running once they're all mixed up. And then we're gonna add the rest of the water kind of slowly. So just this here? Yeah, yeah, that's right. And then you turn that dial to turn it up. Go ahead and turn it all the way up. And you can put that to high. That's good. And then now the only other thing we do is we're going to strain it. And there are two ways to do that. What I started off doing was through cheesecloth, just like this, uh, because you want to get the particles out so that it feels like milk when you're drinking it. Uh, you can you could just strain it through one of these. This is just a ten dollar job, uh, and it's totally palatable and totally yummy. Uh, at this point, it's unless you really like just eating straight raw sesame seeds, it's gonna be a little bit bitter. And so if you're just making it to drink, you'd wanna add some agave nectar to taste or honey or uh, maple syrup or whatever you like. And so, but then I, I was just making so much of it that I went to a restaurant supply place and I got this chinoise, which is a very, it, it strains it just as fine as cheesecloth. They're pretty expensive, they're about $100. But I mean, the cost of this, of this quart or so of Sesame milk is less than 50 cents compared to, you know, three dollar uh, carton of silk or whatever. And then just kind of swirl it around. Can you give me a spoon? Oh yeah. Sure. And so right now she's just kind of put, just stirring it around, and, and it only takes a second to to drain it all out. And we're putting it into a clean blender because we don't want all of the little pieces of, of um, sesame seeds in this. We want a nice smooth, uh, n you know, nice smooth shake. What and do I, do I don't, I don't, um, I don't use two blenders at home. <laughs> you don't need them to have two blenders to do this. We just didn't want to have to rinse one out and, and bring it back. So usually I'll just strain it into a bowl and then pour it into the, rinse out the blender and start over with that. That's pretty, is that? Yeah, that's, pretty nice. that's fine. You can just dump it, dump it out in the trash. And right now we're just gonna throw the pulp away, but often, and one of the recipes that we're gonna use later is for a sesame flour that you can make with the pulp, which is very simple and it's in the recipe. Uh, you basically just dehydrate the pulp and then it'll be in a block and you just blend up that block of pulp and it makes a nice flour. Okay, so now we just add, we're going to add three frozen bananas and my mom does a beautiful job of, of wrapping each banana. So I, these are her frozen bananas that I've stolen. Thank you, mom. <laughs> but she wraps each one individually, which makes it so easy. I tend not to have so much forethought. So I just kind of- <laughs> Leave it to moms I, for that, yeah. You definitely, frozen bananas is a great thing to have. Anytime you see like a bag full of bananas for 99 cents, they're all black and overripe, that you just buy them, buy as many as, as you have freezer space for, peel them and just put them in a bowl, cover it and surround wrap them. And then you make frozen banana ice cream, smoothies, and we use frozen bananas every day. So, and then, we, and then we're gonna add a half a cup of cacao powder and agave nectar. I think that's about a quarter cup, or actually it's about three, three tablespoons. 
and a little more salt. I really like, I, I think salt is very important. And I, it's, so I use good salt, but that was actually the first thing that I learned in culinary school was how to make food taste good. And it's very simple. You just put enough salt in it to make it taste good. If your food is bland, it's not because, I mean, there's no such thing, especially with raw foods, there's no such thing as something that's really bland. I mean, even sesame, sesame seeds have a lot of flavor. And what we're doing with salt and sweet, and sweet by sweetening it, is we're just bringing that flavor out. And we're just allowing our tongue and our bodies to recognize the flavor that's already there. So if anything that you have tastes bland, just add more salt to it or still sweeten it a little bit. Or maybe even add a little bit of acid to it, a little bit of vinegar or something. And it'll bring, all, bring out the whole roundedness of the, of the thing. I use Himalayan crystal salt. It was mined in, in, as crystals out of uh, the Himalayas in Pakistan. And uh, I get it in that form. And I like that because it was in the ocean 250 million years ago. And so to me, it feels like there's no, uh, there's, there's, there's no chance of any heavy metals that we might have, mercury or anything that we might have added to it 250 million years ago. Um, with just about, I use a lot of specialty foods, and that's part of the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing is because I was eating a lot of specialty foods and I just wanted to be surrounded by it. Uh, the, the raw cacao is definitely one of them. The golden berries that I think we should also add in this smoothie, which I've never done, but it'll be fun. Um, the goji berries and the Himalayan crystal salt, they're all specialty food items, and you can get them at various websites like uh, Nature's First Law, which is rawfood.com, raw guru. There's a lot of websites out there that you can get it. And, and here in Sedona, our um, local small market, Rinzai's, has a really wide selection of, of all kinds of stuff. And so that's actually where I get the salt is from Rinzai's. I, I love Rinzai's. If you're anywhere in the world, when you come to Sedona, you should go to Rinzai's. <laughs> He's a beautiful man, and his wife Sabina is a beautiful woman, and they just have this fantastic little store, and that's where we do all our shopping. <laughs> I have to check it out. I haven't been there yet. It's fantastic. Uh, so we adding golden so, berries? Yeah, let's add some. I, I wouldn't add all those, maybe half that. These golden berries are really special, and they're pretty new on the market. It's a pretty cutting edge food. Uh, they're a sacred fruit of the Incas, and I, to my knowledge, they've only really been available on the market for about six months or so. And this is them right here. And these are dried, of course. Uh, they're, they come from Peru. They're heirloom, organic, you know, nothing added to it. And they're, they're delicious. They're very, very tart. They're pretty hard. They're kind of chewy. Um, but the flavor is fantastic. And my favorite truffle right now is golden berries. I just, I, I, I make this golden berry truffle. It's so simple. And I just, I love it. Uh, so it's great with chocolate. But it's really good about anything. I think it'll be great in the shake. So that's. So that's it. Let's just that's blend it, it up. We're blending. If I can get the top on, that might help. There we go. Yeah, yeah. The berries are kind of tough, and it'll probably take a couple minutes to blend that up. Excited. Mmm. Sounds like chocolate banana heaven. That's delicious. Nice. I'm so excited. Great. I'm sure everybody well, we else just, is too. So. This is the first time it's ever been tried with golden berries. So this is worse. Oh, experiment. Yeah, experimenting on the show.